Well, I just want to say it's an absolute honor to have you here in Germany. Welcome to Star Wars Celebration Europe. Uh, absolutely thrilled to be here on, ha on behalf of Lucasfilm and, of course, the whole, the whole fan base. Thank you so much for coming. It's an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think we can enjoy ourselves. Yeah, so, you, of course, you are veterans to Star Wars Celebration. I mean, Warwick, you're, you're a stage host this time. Uh, Mr. Daniels, you have done, uh, you, you invented stage hosting back in the first celebration, is that right? I mean... That's right, yeah, it's all been downhill after that. Somewhere in the Middle Ages, wasn't it? Oh. No, the very first uh, celebration was in Denver, Colorado, in, in America, where everything was splendid until the day it began when the heavens opened and pretty much uh, everybody drowned in mud. It was, it was like a rock festival. But it was the beginning with Dan Madsen, who created the whole thing. And it was the beginning that brings us here to Essen today. And hopefully we've got it right this time. Well, I think so. I think this is a testament to that, the fact that you're all here. Thank you so much again. And of course, uh, Ian McDermott, you were at Celebration last year. I was, yeah. And with your busy schedule, you, I mean, you, you made quite an impact when you came last year. And that was your first Celebration, is that yes, right? Yes, it was great. What I, was I, that experience like? I had never experienced anything like it, really. Um, the dark side coming to Florida uh, was, was, <laughs> was quite an experience in more ways than one. It was just great to see so many people who loved the movies, and uh, I was quite overwhelmed by it. And I dare say I'm going to be overwhelmed once again in continental Europe. That's fantastic. And of course, you have also been uh, to many, many celebrations. What is it about celebration in particular that is so special? I mean, uh, it is a premier Star Wars event. Lucasfilm is here. Uh, but you, you've met so many fans. I think it's purely that the fans come from all over the world. It doesn't matter where you have the celebration. It can be in the States, it can be in Europe, it could be anywhere. And the fans will come as long as we've got this formula. The fans will come, they will say, you talk to them, they save up money to come and enjoy, and enjoy them uh, themselves, talk to, the fa talk to the people and thoroughly enjoy themselves rather than having a vacation. You know that some people are that wet, that inclined. You know they'd rather go, rather spend three days, say in Florida or wherever it is, than have a than go on a vacation because it is a vacation. It it's is a celebration. A yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, True to its name. It's pure celebratory, and when you think about it, it's unique that nothing, no other movies, have even been done this way before. So it's unique in that respect. And it's beautiful. Absolutely. And, and Warwick, you're a stage host this time around. Anything special you have planned that you want to mention? What's going on on the main stage with Warwick Davis? Uh, there's all sorts going on. Uh, we've got a huge venue there, so plenty of seats for everyone to come and uh, see the show. We've got some great guests on stage, uh, many of whom are sitting up here with me now, uh, and Anthony Daniels. Um, <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> So very much looking forward to, to kind of the unexpected as well. I mean, uh, of course, we'll be chatting to all the guests and, uh, you know, I'll be finding out, you know, what the fans want to know. But at the same time, I'm going to have a bit of fun with the guests as well and do things that, that they won't expect and also the audience won't expect as well. So, uh, you know, look out for something quite different this year than, uh, than you might be used to at, uh, at previous celebrations. So be sure to check out Warwick, Warwick Davis on the main stage. A lot of surprises coming, a lot of fun with the guests. Um, Jeremy Bullock, you had a lot of fun on your way here. You participated uh, in Caravan of the Force, something called Caravan of the Force, in order to raise money for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. I wanted to ask you about that because you all rode into town yesterday, right? And uh, can you tell us a little bit about it? Yes, well, we... This is the dodgy one. Ah, oh, there we are. Thank you. Now, we started off from London a week ago and we decided to take the two cars down, the Caravan of the Force. So we stopped off at Holiday Inns that sponsored us. And so it took a whole week to get here, but it was, it was an adventure. Sometimes not the, quite the right venture, but it, it, was, it was terrific. <laughs> Changing uh, sides of the road as you drive yeah, in different just, countries. It, but it, it, it was well worth it, and it was, it was fun, fun to do. I'd never do it again. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you ever think you'd be up here after 30 years? This is the 30th anniversary of Return of the Jedi. And here in 2013, it's hard to believe that 30 years ago that movie came out. It feels, 
It feels just like it was made yesterday. What are some of your fondest moments of Return of the Jedi now that you're looking back uh, on that movie? Um, did it feel like the end? Did you know that you would be here in 2013 having this press conference with each other? Well, for me, it was just the beginning, uh, in a sense that it was the first acting role that I'd had, the first feature film I'd been in. I mean, uh, you know, I went into it as a Star Wars fan, as a, as a child of 11 years old, having, having seen Star Wars and Empire and, and loving them. And then there I was on set with my, with my heroes, really, in, you know, in the shape of Mark Hamill, Harrison Ford, <laughs> Carrie Fisher, and Anthony Daniels. Um, and, uh, you know, they were all there. And, and it was just the most amazing experience. And, and little did I know it would lead on to a career in acting. But, yeah, I would never have thought that we'd still be celebrating that film 30 years on. And, and it just still seems as popular as ever. You know what I mean? Star Wars is, is not something that's going to go away anytime soon. It just builds and builds. And, you know, events like Celebration help us to realize that and to, to celebrate the films, of course. And, Mr. Daniels, of course, you have the... the uh the notable mention that you are the only actor to have been in all six Star Wars films. Return of the Jedi, I mean, you experienced all of them. What was it that was unique about Return of the Jedi for you? Return of the Jedi was, was a lot of fun because we had some magical locations as well as being in uh, L Street Studios. And there were other things that for 3PO, you know, he's been kicked around all through these films. He's been torn apart, he's whatever. But finally, and people say, what is your favorite line from the movies? And it's the point, you know, Han Solo was pretty mean to 3PO all yeah. the way through. So actually, 3PO's favorite line was as Han Solo is hanging over a a cooking fire with the Ewoks. Mm. I, I mentioned Thank you. You, you, you said the word Ewok. Yeah, I, did, I did. Sorry about that. Um, but 3PO, he, Solo says, uh, so what, what are they saying? It appears, Captain Solo, that you are to be the main course at a banquet given in my honor. <laughs> 3PO loved that. But he loved being king of the Ewoks, didn't he? Yes. I think the, the, the you Ewoks, worshipped me. Well, we worship did worship me. you. I think we were seriously kind of you know, off track there, though, come to think of it now. <laughs> um, yeah, very, very mis misjudge, misjudged there. Um, but, um, and also, the road to Jabba's palace actually is my favourite scene, and I'll tell you why. Because R2-D2 is totally silent during filming. It makes whirring noises or whatever, but there's no beep, 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 or anything. It's put on afterwards. So very early on in filming when I was getting confused saying all my lines without any kind of reaction, I said to George, who was over there, George Lucas, by the camera, um, could somebody, like when I finished speaking, could somebody make a sound like beep or, or something, just to say I finished my line and then I reply and so on. Could they say beep? Oh, well, sure. And so we started again. Where are you going? What? What makes you think that you're being out of D2? Is that all right? Okay. Yes. I don't have to do anything. <laughs> what makes you think that a settlement's over there? Squeak, squeak. No, no, no. You just ruined the story. George went beep. And it was awful. He just, it was useless. So from then on, but when we were on the road to Jabba's palace, and I've told this story many times, I was rehearsing by, my, <laughs> by myself, and suddenly I hear... Beep, 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 beep. And there is George, like this, behind me, going, because he was very happy. For him at that time, it was the last movie. And I've never seen him happier until the other day. That's great. Well, I want to open up to questions from the press. I want to give you an opportunity to ask questions of our cast here. Uh, let's see, where, where are we setting up? Where's Miles? Sure. Setting up? Or just, maybe we just do a raise of hands. You just do it from your seats. Right here. Nope. You? Right here in the, in the blue. This isn't going to work, is it? No. Anyone? Questions? Chap in the blue shirt here. I'll, oh, there you go. Right here in the front this row. The go ahead. You right here in the front row. Yeah. Oh, uh, let's see. Let's get you a mic. Hi. Hello. It's, it's an honor to meet you all. I'm Pavis from RTL Television. Um, you're here in Germany, maybe for the first time, so what, what kind of feeling is it for you? Going around the world and spending these great conventions like Star Wars Celebration and entering now Germany and we'll be meeting maybe 30,000 fans this, this weekend. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's nice to be here, isn't it? I mean, I, I, it mean um, it's, uh, I think it's great that it's quite central in Europe, isn't it? So people can come. It, it just allows more people to come to see the, the event, to be at Celebration, uh, you know, from farther afield. Um, and, um, you know, so far, my experience here has been great. And you know, Germany's been a very nice host to the event so far. So, uh, 
So yeah, but I haven't seen very much of it. I mean, Dusseldorf Airport's very nice, and uh, <laughs> and the hotel's very nice, and the convention center's very nice. But that's the experience so far for me. But uh, but it's all been great. Thank you. Two years ago, two years ago, I think, uh, and I can't remember the city that where we performed Star Wars in concert. Uh, it was where? Absolutely, it was at the house. And um, I learned to say, willkommen auf Kriegsstern in concert. Yes, that's about all the German I can speak. But the audience was stunning because all my words are translated as I speak into, into English. But the level of understanding of English, as in this room today, is phenomenal. Now, obviously, 3PO would understand any language that you would care to speak. Unfortunately, I don't. So uh, I'm very grateful that you all speak English. But the other thing that came up during those concerts was the age range. Three generations of Star Wars yeah. fans. You've seen this too. Yeah, yeah. And George has always said, he always said that the, the first three movies, uh, you know, are loved by many people, but young kids would like the three prequels more than they would. And um, it's, they, it's absolutely true. And what's extraordinary about it is they seem to get younger. Four-year-olds and five-year-olds of my acquaintance uh, seem to be, yes, just, you, you, you're not on microphone, so you can't contradict me, Anthony. Um, they, uh, they seem to get it uh, and are as excited about it as our generation was all those years ago. And I rather thought that, you know, with the fast movement of movies and digital technology and all the many blockbusters, blockbusters around, Star Wars might seem just a little bit old-fashioned. But the reverse is true. More people seem to find it more exciting than ever, which is great. One of the things, if I can add, um, because it comes again out of Europe, is Lego. Lego Star Wars has, has so entranced the younger generation. And the, the stories uh, through animations, whether it's uh, Clone Wars or the Lego uh, cartoon films that we do, children so relate to those images and stories. And as they grow up, they come into the films and so on. And I'm glad to say that for both of us, I really regard this as being our pension plan as we get older, well, that these young hurt. kids will grow up to yeah. have kids of their own. Where else? Right over, right here. Okay, there you go. Yeah, hello, good evening. Is it working? Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. Well, um, I suppose it's fair to say that um, the Star Wars celebration is a huge event, especially for the fans. They, some prepare a year in advance, and to them, the celebration means a lot. And now you're here at the celebration. What does the celebration mean to you? A pension scheme, <laughs> uh, security, you know, it, it's another form of it, getting to know the fans, getting to know what they want for hopefully future projects and stuff like this. It's a one-to-one -one you, that you get rather than going through the websites and this sort of thing. Uh, it's a one-to-one, -one, it keeps the press happy, and, you know, it's great for, you know, it's a, it's a wonderful thing. And every celebration, there is something different that has come out off the movies and off the paintings and the books. So there's always something new to look at with Star Wars. One of the things I enjoy is the fact that at celebration, fans are really encouraged to be a major part of the show. <clears throat> we are, in fact, all guests because it isn't really about us. It's about the films and the personal involvement of each of the, for want of a better word, fan, but the visitors, who come often in wonderful costumes that they've created or they bring mm. a prop that they've created. And Lucasfilm would hate me for saying this, but I'd much rather see a child not in some plastic thing he's brought from a shop, but in a collection of cardboard boxes that have been stuck together and painted white, and he thinks he, he's a stormtrooper. Forgive me, uh, stormtrooper. <laughs> very, very nice. <laughs> but next time, I want to see you in cardboard boxes, okay? That's cool. Um, but it is the participation of individuals who come, and they meet other individuals, and hopefully they make terrific lifelong friends. Uh, for me, celebration is a lot of hard work, but at the same time, it's, it's a chance to, to get together with, um, with old friends uh, again. Uh, just, uh, you know, this is our chance to kind of, kind of, for a bit of a reunion as well. Sometimes we don't see each other for many years, so, so it's always nice to kind of get together and reminisce. Uh, and it's, it's my chance to do something I love, particularly when I'm, I'm hosting, and that's get on stage and, uh, you know, 
bring Star Wars to the audience in a slightly different way and, uh, and interview the amazing guests that I do have. Because, uh, you know, these gentlemen, believe it or not, you might not have seen it uh, up here now, but they're vastly interesting people. Uh, and, uh, and will be brilliant uh, in my shows, uh, hopefully. Actually, Warwick did just say something interesting there, which, which uh, re reminded me that when you're making a film, and the people on the, on the floor of the studio don't really care. They just need to get on to the next shot and, and, and finish the day, keep mm -hmm. on schedule and so on. When you, when the audience goes to see the film, it's a finished piece of work that you can relate to only by appreciating the images. But the, the people who create the images aren't there to hear the laughter, the quietness, the applause, whatever. Celebration is a real living event, as well Star Wars in concert, where one had the sort of whole film ethos, but then it actually connects live to your eyes, your soul, your heart, all that kind of thing. So this is the film almost coming alive for the audience here, for the guests. Anyone else? No? Next question right here. Hi guys, um, good to see you here. Um, I just wondered, um, there's been lots of Star Wars merchandise produced over the years and lots of advertising. Uh, I just wondered um, what the most surprising thing you've ever been asked to sign is. I have a Pez dispenser I'm very proud of. <laughs> oh, do you know what a Pez dispenser is perhaps in this country? A little thing that emits sweets. I have a full-size Boba Fett which is still there, looking at me every morning I go upstairs. It's standing there. But it's a, it's a deterrent for anybody trying to take anything from our house because it slightly moves every now and then, so I feel quite secure. Thank you. Um, I've got one pet hate about signing things, and especially the little Pez dispensers, which <laughs> are that big. You've got hands that are that big. You have problems, but fortunately I've developed a technique where I put Chewie on one foot and Peter Mayhew on the other, and most people are pretty happy with that. So that was, you know, that was my first nightmare when someone came up and said, I want this signed. I went, oh dear. Well, I love signing Pez dispensers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and, and Lego figures, it's, it's brilliant, love those. Um, the weirdest thing anyone's got me to sign is, is sort of a part of their body. I don't know whether any of the other guests here have had that, but you know, they, they might have a tattoo or something of your character and then you have to sign alongside it. Mm. And then they will then go and get that tattooed on there as well. So, um, so that's like, it's normally an arm or a leg or something like that. I was going to say that, you stole my line. <laughs> I did, I'm afraid, refuse to sign somebody's arm because they've got 3PO there. And please would I... Do that, and I just felt queasy about it. So I said no. So, have you ever been confronted with somebody's tattoo face to face? Uh, I, I once had a fan walk up to me, and he said, "Do you want to see my tattoo?" And I thought, "Do I have a choice?" And he went, "No." <laughs> and then he, he literally pulled his shirt up like that, and I was face to face with myself as Willow, no. as Willow, sort of peeking out of his trousers there, and <laughs> it was quite disturbing, seriously. Uh, and um, so, yeah, that was the most. Um, one of my most memorable uh, fan encounters I think I've had. Did you have to sign it? Uh, no, I ran. Oh. <laughs> and then he was taken away by men in white coats shortly afterwards, so it was all fine. Let's see who's next. Right over here. G'day, gentlemen. Daryl from Australia, DJ. And um, just wanted to ask Ian, uh, you said at the last celebration that if anybody, you would be unhappy if anybody else played the Emperor. Now, of course, we can't talk about sequels, can we talk about the Darth Plagueis book? Have you read that? And would you be open to doing spin-off movies? Yeah, well, we all know about the books and the movies, and they run alongside but don't directly relate to the movies themselves. Uh, but it's, it's a good story, and I, I've always felt, although George never gave away any secrets, that, that the Emperor probably had a very interesting private life early on. Uh, so I've been privately speculating about that, of course. You know, when you build up a character, you, you sort of imagine various things that might have happened. But as he is solidly evil, I don't intend to go into them with you here. Uh, but it would, I think all the characters in the movies have, have backstories, and rumour is that one day some of them might be followed up. So here's hoping. Anyone else? Let's see. Where's Miles? There he is. Anybody? Anyone? 
Oh, you guys are going easy on us up here. Oh, right here. Hi, guys. Uh, Mark from Northern Ireland. Um, this is a question I'd like to ask anybody as a Star Wars fan, and you guys obviously fall into that category. I have two small kids, and I'm sort of introducing them to Star Wars now. What order should we watch the movies? Which uh, order I, should I ask watch myself the this movies? on a daily basis. Well, just before I came to Celebration, uh, you know, being the host, I thought I'd better brush up on the films again. And I watched them with my family, one, two, three, four, five, six, which I hadn't done before. Uh, and it was quite an interesting way to watch them. And, and whatever order you choose, it, it does present quite a different experience, I think. Um, uh, and I had heard that uh, wasn't there somebody that devised the correct way to watch them was certainly not in number order. And it wasn't even in sort of original trilogy, then prequels. There was sort of, you, you do... You do one, and then you skip a few, and you go back and things. Does somebody know about that? Four, five, one, two, three, six. Or four, five, three, six is the variant there, mm. I suppose. In oh, Star Wars in Concert, I told the story from episode one through to episode six. And I promise you, I'm the only person to be in all six movies. And it was the first time learning the script that I understood the story. <laughs> Either I'm very stupid, or it does actually make sense. And you watch this cute child growing up, growing up, growing up, be evil. The other way around, you get the dramatic irony of when you go back to the uh, prequels, you see the young child, and you, the audience, know more than anybody else on the set, he's going to be evil by the time we get to six. So you lose that quality. But it is a, a question families are asking themselves on a daily basis. Can I just say this? When we were watching the, the films in order as a family, we got to Empire... And my kids said, what's happened to Yoda? He's lost his marbles. I mean, in other words, all of a sudden, he's become quite eccentric, you know, from what we saw at the end of Revenge of the Sith. And uh, so that was quite interesting. I said, well, he's been on Dagobah a long time. He hadn't chatted to anybody. He said, you know. Also, he'd gone latex, hadn't he, suddenly? Oh, he had. That had happened as yes. well. Because originally was he was atmosphere. digital. I mean, it's the magic, isn't it? In, in the prequels, he was digital. I think you've got to bear in mind that the prequels, you have a 10-year you have a 10-year gap between the original three and the new three. So it all depends on the age of the child, really. If you're, you know, if you're a purist, you'd go one through six, because that is the way that the, book is uh, the, book, the, the books are written. But uh, it, I think it entirely depends on what parents, you know, if the parents are true Star Wars fans, they will be happy to teach their children, or should be, be happy to teach the children the way that the story comes out so that they are fully up to date. When they finish Jedi, they are fully up to date to wait and see what else is going to happen. That's a great question. Right here. Hi there, uh, David from Canada. Uh, my question's for Ian. Um, when you went and you, you filmed The Emperor in 1983, um, and then you got offered the role in 1999 to uh, go back to that character, um, from the point of view of an actor, what was the experience like to be able to um, expand upon a character you played so long ago? Yeah, well, it was sort of full of ironies, because I was much younger then, but older then as the character. I think I, in Turn of the Jedi, I'm something like 120. We haven't, we haven't exactly worked it out. Uh, and I thought that was the end of the matter, you know. He was dead. That was it. And uh, George, I don't think George actually was particularly thinking about prequels in those days, although he always had the full story in his head, I'm quite sure. And then because I was in my 30s when I played that 120-year-old, and the guy who started off as a senator had to be roughly 50. I was exactly the right age when he came to do uh, the prequel. So I was sort of fortunate twice. Um, and he also didn't tell me I was also Darth Sidious. He said, there's this other dark character in it. You know, he's really the most evil creature in the film. Uh, obviously, you start off as a senator, just like he said, I think, our current prime minister was John Major, who was a fairly straightforward, affable kind of guy. So uh, I thought about that when I was playing it. Um, and then when I got the, the scripts day by day, I realized I was also Sidious, and that Sidious was obviously the emperor and schizophrenic and, and all the rest of it. Um, and that was, that was fascinating, and as you probably know, it was sheer luck that I was involved in the first place because they'd cast a much older actor 
who couldn't be insured because he couldn't take the yellow eyes. They, they didn't agree with his own eyes. Um, so I had started, stumbled into the um, uh, Star Wars universe out of the blue, and uh, I got lucky twice. So it was, it was fascinating. But also, uh, the, the, the most helpful thing that George ever said to me about those two characters, he said, when you're playing Palpatine, it's as if you're wearing contact lenses. So in other words, my own eyes, I should treat as if they were false. Didn't mean I had to do anything particular, but it was a very, very good note um, from a director to a, an actor. Great question. We have, right here. We, we have the last question here. Yeah, we just have time for one more. Hi, um, this is a huge honor to have you all here. Um, my question is for all of you. Have you ever met someone who has not seen any Star Wars film at all? In case that has happened, um, do you have to tell them the story? or? Yes, I do. I, I say it's about this golden droid who goes on all these adventures. <laughs> <laughs> There's lots of people, I'm glad to say, who've, who've never seen these, these films. Uh, for, for fans, they are absolutely chock full of things to see on every occasion. But there, quite rightly, there are many people who've not got round to it. I said the other day that I have never yet seen Gone with the Wind, and I doubt I, I ever will now. Would like it. Would I, would I like it? No, no, I'll go see Gone with the Wind. Well, just, go ahead. Mm. Oh, I just wanted to ask you a follow-up. Uh, any of you, it's kind of an open-ended question. What is, it, what is the quality that you think, what is the particular quality that you think makes Star Wars endure uh, past so many movies that have come out? so many different properties that come and go. What is it for you about Star Wars that makes it so special? Me. <laughs> well, I walked right into that one, I think. Uh, <laughs> the fact that the most evil creature in the universe could be defeated by teddy bears, I think. Is, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, it's just kind of special. It's something that you and all of us, I think, are very proud of doing, um, creating characters out of virtually drawings and bringing those characters to life and having such a big audience that, um, that are interested in, do, in seeing it and what is happening and stuff like this. So that, to me, is, is, is a special, it's a special time in your life when you think, hmm, I've done this, now what's next? But uh, things, will, things will open up, you know, you talk to people, other things come from celebration, and I know that uh, the controlling companies have various ideas about certain other projects, um, but, you know, it, it, it will take time to get organised and get get promoted. Right, right. It's a great saga about good and evil. Simple as that. Yeah, yeah. it's a terrific story. You know, and we're always held by terrific stories. Absolutely. One of the things that will occur to you, all of us as we're here, is that I have learned, because I didn't really appreciate this, that Star Wars has actually become a time timeline in the lives of many people and their families. Mm -hmm. And that means good times, bad times, where Star Wars has actually been a bit of, um, how would you say, um, a place to go, a place of safety, um, that's carried people through some of the difficult times of being alive and so on. And people hold it to themselves as part of their family history. And you'll, you'll hear that more and more as we go around this, uh, this event here in Essen. Well, I want to thank all of you for taking the time. Certainly, there's a lot to do this weekend, a lot to see. Um, there's, there's even more coming up. We're going to be moving into the second half of the press conference in just a moment. But I just wanted to say thank you so much. I'm so looking forward to seeing all of you and hearing your wonderful stories, seeing your shows. And I just would like you to join me in giving them a round of applause for their time here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Sam. Thank you. From, from the end, Jeremy Bullock. Warwick Davis, Anthony Daniels, Ian McDiarmid. Are we? Are, I'm sorry. And Peter Mayhew. Thank you. <laughs>